Hey, Brett. Due to technical faults, sorry about that, bro. There's unedited stuff. I'm on my phone now. So, yeah, we're all, we're all it's all good. <laughs> we're back again. Hey, that would be good because there'll be like more recordings of this because if I've got my other one and I've got this as well, so it'd be good. It's all converted. Yeah, and what I wanted to ask you as well, um, as part of the interview on there is that when you're getting more students come, have you, have you, have you noticed that the people that have come in, you know, have you noticed that there's, there's more and more people coming in because of like self-defence? Or is it fitness? You know, what are the sort of the different reasons of why they've come in? You know, because obviously there's so many different reasons of why people do do the FMA now. You know, they they've seen it in the films. You know, they've they've seen people like uh, in the Mission Impossible, people coming in. They've got like kick ass. You know, there's more people. I didn't even realize that there's more actors even doing it. You know, in choreography. You know, with that. You know, what's what are some of the reasons that people are doing it? Is it is it to do with fitness or is it just a new art? them uh majority that that come and do join uh my club mainly is self-defense because they always want to look for something that's um, practical and uh yes. that really works for the street and a lot of um problems of people having in london is knife incidents because the screamer yeah. or the pipida martial art is number one in in knife fighting uh, they're one of the best in the world you know uh for the technique teaching the um, teaching the military guys, um, bodyguards, I've been teaching the, uh, those end as well. So yeah, majority self-defense. And then since I've been in the film industry, more and more actors and stunts are coming in to train the realism of it. Because yeah. I know the technique behind it, like, because I've been training it for such a, such a long time, um, works really well for self-defense as well as uh, film choreography. You know, I see it, you've seen in June, they've introduced the, the whole bowing thing as part of the, um, the fighting art of some of the characters. It's amazing to see that, you know. I mean, it's been there around a lot, but not many people actually knows it. Uh, at the moment, unfortunately, not many Filipino um, coordinating, but I've seen a lot of um, Filipino in the US uh, becoming um, stunt performers and becoming second unit directors. So it's slowly getting there in, a, in, a, in the mainstream for this FMA art to, you know, to surface itself. <clears throat> I didn't even know this. I wasn't aware. When I was doing a bit of homework and watching the films, they they some filming because I love my movies, my martial arts and action. I looked back and I realised there's another uh, fellow Filipino uh, martial arts instructor on identity. Uh, they were doing doing some uh, Philippine martial arts, and it's become a popularised thing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel? Did you think that not just the kickboxing? and the karate that fma now has actually sort of participated in a lot of film choreography and i think there was one called frankenstein that was the one one actor yeah that had six yeah yeah that, well. Well. yeah that had a double stick uh, choreography on there yes and um there's another one the thing is the only thing about filipino martial art when they're putting on films the thing is just it's grimace sticks. So that's how people yeah. see it as a device. No, but it's, not. No. it's all True. weapon, every hand and locks and breaks, throw, uh, groundwork. It has all that mm. element, knife technique and all that. But because it looks mm. similar from other things, they think it's not it's Grima or Filipino martial art. So they associate Filipino martial art with sticks. If there's a stick, oh, it's Filipino martial art or it's Kung Fu. Or it's, it's the only thing they see. When they see someone with sticks, it's like, oh, it's really, you know, that's all, the only way they can tell it's FMA. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. holding a stick or holding a, a, a screamer. But to be honest, like Born Automatum, it showed that it had, Filipino martial art is very good for close quarter technique. So that's what Born mm -hmm. was about, about the uh, the close quarter drill of the Filipino martial art, the, te the tactics and uh, the actual offensive techniques of it. It's very aggressive in either yeah. self-defense and attack, you know? especially with a knife and the empty hand drill, you know, breaking the limb, you know, this limb destruction, gunting and all that kind of stuff, you know, parrying. That was all in um, Born, you know? And then later it was developed in also in Batman and, and then into the uh, Fast, uh, Furious, mm -hmm. uh, Fast, you know, movies in Saga. Yeah. I had one at the ending where Statham took one of the um, car parts, 
Yes, I did the stick fighting uh, scene at the end of it. I can't remember. It might have been Fast Set. I can't uh, recall which which one it was. But there's definitely a screamer section there as well for FMA. This is it. There's a lot of hidden hidden stuff. Oh, excuse me. Unedited stuff. That was my my thumbnail. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, what I wanted to ask you as well is who would you have? There's two, two choices here. Those who have passed and those who are still alive, who would you have dinner with? Why? And uh, what would you say? Uh, I would say past Jackie Chan. And mm. now, that's a hard one, actually. I would say Botesta because I kind of, I really like him as an actor. He's from from a, a wrestling uh, background, making it into the mainstream. I mean, he's like one of the lead guys in June, and his mm. acting ability is just like immense. He's developed really well. I would like to have a dinner with him actually. <laughs> yeah, mm. and give him a hug for our fellow Philly, you know, <laughs> for making it out for us, you know. So yeah, and he he works incredibly hard as well. Well, yeah, no, this this is it, you know. This, there's a lot of things there, you know, some people don't don't realise, you know, that's what, what goes on in the background. This is why I like yeah. doing this kind of footage, because like now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I think it's good to share uh, what other people do. And sometimes you don't get enough where people like to script things, you know, and people like the raw deal and they're like, oh, that's intriguing. Right, because a lot of people tend to think, because the last interview I did was mental health. Uh, one of my dear friends I grew up with, uh, James Mace. Um, before I, um, I spoke to you, I was speaking to him about mental health. Uh, he's, he, saw it, he founded um, an organisation called Walk and Talk for Men um, in regards to mental health. Now, this is a good thing as well I mentioned to you. Martial, martial arts and a form of exercise and discipline what would you say in regard to that as uh, sort of the mental health and awareness? Uh, that's a good thing for, for involving martial arts because it, it's giving you something to focus on and it's keeping you fit, your endorphins, you know, are going, it's making you feel happy. You know, in terms of that, what do you, the mental health and well-being in regards to martial arts as well? I think it helps really well to keep uh, people sane because of the, uh, the, the skills and technique and the philosophy behind it. I mean, during lockdown, I think it saved a lot of people yeah. doing something because I did a lot of online classes throughout the week, you know. Mm. Uh, I think any form of martial art, whatever it is, or any hobby, I think as long as it keeps your mind busy uh, mm. doing things rather than thinking ne negative stuff and, you know, the world's going to end and all this vaccine and hearing all this conspiracy stuff. I think martial arts or activities that gives you uh, a fresh, you know, mind kind of thing helps, you know. Yeah. Internal, like, you know, uh, physical, physicality, obviously martial art helps really well. And it just gives you a focus as well, you know. So what, what would you say in terms of youngsters out there or, or anyone of any age um ladies gents with wanting to start uh with fma you know um what would you say you know do you think you know do you feel that you know you like for example a, a six-year-old or a nine-year-old was saying well look i'm getting picked up on school you know what can I use? What can I use in terms of martial arts? Because obviously, there's different variations in Dosi Perez. You know, it's pe a lot of people think, like you mentioned, you know, don't you perceive it's all about knife fighting and sticks? There are a lot more. There's a lot more to it in there. You know, in terms of that, you know, to uh, to encourage. Because I think it's good to have some form of defence. Because there's a lot of people out there, youngsters, young young women, young men. You know, and even even the the older generation, you know, that feel that you know, oh, I might be getting too old. You know, you're never too old. You know, to to start. You know, what would you say in regards to those? You know, that feel, oh, I don't know what to do. You know, they'll come in as I'll pick up some sticks. <laughs> you know, it's not about picking up the sticks and then starting. 
yeah. you know, it, what, would they, what would they want to work on? You know, something like that. Because I mentioned this, this is a good question that I spoke to um, my friend James um, earlier. Um, he said, it, no, the hat, you know, one hat doesn't fit all. You know, do you feel it's the same thing of mentality with, with the FMA? You know, when people start, you know, it's not just you just do this because, you know, you come in and you think, oh, well, I think you should do this, you know, this part of our FMA, you know, because, you know, and that's what you need to work on. Or do you, do you feel that you go, what do you feel that you want to do? You know, in, what do you want, you know, out of it? Yeah, um, I mean, it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard one, to be honest, because in the day, it's really what you're looking for. If you do self-defense, then it's an obvious one what art to get. Obviously, fine. Uh, a good instructor near your area and if there isn't one and if it's FMA that you're specifically looking for I mean there's a lot of martial art out there that deals with the self-defense you know depending yeah, yeah. on what you're looking for I mean I mean knife if you say against a knife I think you don't get any better than Filipino martial art because that's what we do all day long um, I think mainly is to enjoy it really but you shouldn't be more specific like, oh, I want to learn it because I want it for self-defense. Um, exactly. I think you have a bit, a bit of everything, a bit of both. Uh, you want to learn it because you want to enjoy it and be fitness. At the same time, maybe it will be handy uh, when someone attacks you because obviously, you know, you not you don't go do an art to train to hurt someone. That's not no, what I'm talking about, you know. It's about life, you know. If you need to use it, it's last resort in a way, you know. Um, <laughs> especially the screamer side, it's all about weapons. And you get taught how to use weapons, not to defend against them, you know. You master weapons. So that's more, it's more of a dangerous <laughs> of art to learn compared to the other martial arts. Mm. You know? That's the difference. But mainly, I think, if you're a young kid that wants to learn martial arts, I think go out there that you enjoy it and have yeah. fun. With it. And depending on what your end goal is, you know. And compete also helps it as well. Because otherwise, sometimes you just end up not doing it too long. If you don't enjoy <laughs> doing it for one reason you know you're doing it for self-defense maybe yeah maybe you enjoy it maybe you don't you know because how many times do you get attacked and then some people hardly get attacked some people get attacked a lot of times and down mm. is down to how you carry yourself you know sometimes mm. you carry yourself wrong walking down the street so yeah understanding yeah. body language as well is very important in uh learning martial arts you know be confident as well, you know, it gives you confident confident in yourself uh, walking around. Uh, yeah, that's true. I'm never too old to learn anything, I would say. That's true. No, I appreciate that. And one, one other thing that I'd like to ask you in regards to FMA, what was it like to, to train with the Grand Masters? Because that's, I'd, I'd love this, you know, I've never asked that actually, because there's a few people that I know and they've, they've, trained with actual grand masters and the feeling must be great you think you know, I'm training with the grand master here like one of these one of the greats and you're thinking wow you know that's like one of the things like um you know like um, a tick off your your life you know bucket list isn't it you know you think wow you know I've done that you know I've, I've been there I've trained with the grand master because you do get some people though you know it's not about about claiming to fame or anything like that it's like one of those things that you, you you can't what's the best way to explain it you can't ever have again you know once you've done something and it's unique and you're there you know you feel that you think oh my goodness you know i'm here i'm doing it i'm a present i'm with with a grand master you know you, you you get some things that you know in life where you take it for granted you think oh i'll just go down there you know it's not like as if you're going to go go into a shop and you think oh i'm going to get get an item and then you'll get that again. Whereas, you know, when you're training with someone and then at that high level, you know, you don't get that many times in your life, you know, where, what did it feel like, you know, being able to do, to do that must be, must be great, you know, great feeling to, to, to train with a grandmaster. Yeah. I mean, it's the best experience you can get, to be honest. Uh, what more to learn from the, from the best knowledge that's kept, that's trained for like 30 years uh it's like drinking an old wine the best old oh, yeah. wine you can have is literally training with the grandmaster is just like that you know they have so much history uh so much knowledge and so much technique uh to learn from and and they learn 
a lot of it from the basics, you know. Um, yeah, if you can find uh, something like that to learn, it's, it's one of the best ways to, to have understanding is, to, is to, to really find a time to learn from a grandmaster who's been like training it for over 30 years, some of these guys, you know, and they've been doing it since they were a kid. And, and these grandmasters are like proper, you know, proper good. And they give you the philosophy as well, especially in the olden <laughs> days of they train. A lot of it, the philosophy of training of the olden days is what I love. Uh, talking how they started, how they train, the grandmaster that pushed them, you know, and how they they taught them. And it's very backyard school kind of style, like similar similar way that I teach my children. Um, it's very informal. I sometimes sit down on a mat and I just watch them, you know. And, and that's what they do. When I trained before, um, my instructor used to just sit down on his chair and just watch what I do for like four to five hours a day. And it's amazing because you don't really answer anything or you don't really question anything that he says. You just, he's there at presence to make you the best, basically. Yeah. Or as good as him or better, you know. Cool. So how do you, how do you feel as if in terms of when you're, you're competing you know what did it what did it feel like you know when you when you uh when you last competed because like i know you know over time you know you do get each competition is different and what did it feel like on the last competition was it like oh my goodness you know i'm getting to the time now it's this you know the last person that I've, you you were there competing with you know was was it was it harder than you expected or was it sort of was it like oh actually this isn't too bad you know because sometimes you get these butterflies you know in your in, in your feeling you're what most people get excited soon you get in there or even nervousness you know when you compete you know you're there you're ready and then the moment that like, they like what, it, what is it they do now is it they do they just do that or do they like like a flag that they use and then they go right go and then that's it you start and then you're like oh my goodness <laughs> here we go and then your heart's beating boom 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 Or are you calm under pressure? What are you what are you like as a what were you like, you know, when you were competing? Was you nervous or were you were you like, oh no, this is gonna be all right? <laughs> no, every competition that I go in, I'm always nervous. Um I'm always nervous, I'm always scared. Um yeah. yeah, I think that's how I always see my fighting. The same thing when I do uh acting and when I do stunts, yeah. I always have that butterfly, you know, it's never uh, never the same, you know, never uh, take it for granted kind of thing so i think the last fight i did was maybe 2015 um yeah. i love fighting i enjoy competition because i love the thrill of it the yeah. speed power but to be honest i don't have the cardio anymore because i don't train as much as what i used to do yeah. more technique especially that now i'm working a lot on on the acting side and stunts yeah. um i don't have the cardio i don't used to run as much as you used to before you know mm -hmm. um i guess i still got it i mean i can beat the average joe but if the, if that guy is super trained, I've got no way to to beat him on cardio. But I can beat them on technique because I know how to relax. So it's fun yeah. at the same time because when you fight someone who's a novice and non-experienced, you can dance around them because you know to conserve energy. I think understanding yeah. conserving energy is very nice because you kind of yeah. like I know what I'm, I, I think I do all right actually on actual fighting. Yeah, and, you know, and the speed's still there, not as fast as before. But yeah. I think yeah, I feel more pain now as well. I'm not, I'm not as conditioned as uh, I used to be. So every strike that I get hit, I feel it now. I'm like, oh man, I don't really want to be doing this anymore. You know, this is like a young, a young guy's game. And, and I've got other things to concentrate now. You know, I've got other students that, that, that fights for the club. I mean, if that was my own my main goal, I would probably most likely I would still love to fight because I had, yeah. I think I had a goal of getting, t getting 10 world championship title. At the moment, mm. currently, I'm still on eight. And mm. I stop on but I've always got that goal of 10. I may return yeah. them or not, you know what I'm saying? But because no. I've been on the acting side, I, I'm yeah. still like, I quite, I've hanged it, but I haven't quite, you know, uh, I might come back later when, when I'm done with acting and stunts, you know, when I'm a bit older or, you know. Do you have but, any members of the family? The one I like to ask you as well. Do you have any family friends or even sort of relatives that actually do FMA as well? As well as uh, no. Um, they used to, and then they, as they got older and they moved further away from uh, in London and they can, they've kind of stopped training, which is a bit of a shame. But my son does it, so he trains under me and, and my ex. So he's, um, he's uh, 
flying the banners at the moment. So yeah, he trains hard. He started since he was a baby. So wow. God knows what he's going to be like when he's old and adult. I mean, I started when I was 21. He started since he was born in the gym. So he's going to be, I can see him already, like he's crazy good. <laughs> the other thing is as well, um, what I'd like to ask you before sort of like I'd like to sort of wrap things up a little bit is have you noticed this now I know a lot of people they might think it's a bit of mumbo jumbo but I've noticed we are very superstitious in the Philippines and even other cultures of martial arts now have you what is this about the amulet have you noticed about this about this screamer doors do you remember there was something about amulet you know they're very superstitious with as a as an actual you know the the old school is screamer door what is this about you know can you tell me a little bit about that about what they their belief system is have you have you noticed that about this amulet that you have and then it gives you some sort of superstitious energy and power from like the moon the sun and all of all of that stuff what, what do you what do you think of that what's your take on that it's it's part of the art actually. Uh, it's yeah. like back in the olden days. It's called the Anting Anting. Yes. Uh, it's like a protector of uh, evil. I mean, I used to have it when I was a young kid, but it was slightly different. It was more of what you call Mama Mary. It's yes. a protection of evil evil beings that are trying to harm you. So yeah, because you know Philippines is very spiritual. We're like what, 90%, 95% Catholic. Yeah. We still are one of the hardcore practice that does it. I mean, Pope uh, it's the only Asia country that he goes and visit is Philippines because we're quite die hard at, at the religion so yeah, yeah um, um, Danting Anting has been around a lot and it's part of the, the scream actually because uh, in the olden days we have what we call a Hiluxin system where yeah. it's died now I mean I'd love to learn it it's like a massage Thai massage kind of thing but it's what each warrior in the olden days used to know how to hit, self heal itself so it's called uh, a massage uh, I mean, I had it when I was a young kid. It's like we call it a witch doctor. So yes. he, he looked at that. Basically, when I go to the Philippines, I, I have it where the practitioner actually takes bad energy off you and they burp. It sounds rude in a way, but they burp out what, when they give you this massage. It's like literally, basically, it's like get the energy out. That's the, the actual beliefs in it. Yeah. And the Anting Tenting is like, um, it's like a crazy, a crazy amulet. Uh, I don't yeah. know if it's true or not. But I mean, I've heard some crazy story where people wearing it in like World War II, where they literally run towards the enemy with this amulet and no bullets would hit them. But probably most of it is like them being afraid, having this nutter coming towards them with a the machete <laughs> and missing them. I don't know if it was much of an amulet, powers, but I'd love to believe it was. But to be honest with you, it's probably the guy on the other end of that rifle was like, what the hell is this guy running through me with a barely nothing on, with a loincloth? And he's got a machete shouting nonsense or shouting like, ah, but this guy <laughs> kind of like panic, can you? you got a guy sprinting towards you that like he's going to literally, you know, cut you open. So, yeah. you know, you're going to miss him. So, yeah, so a lot of believe it's an amulet, but there is a secret thing that is supposed to protect you. But I did have it when I was young. So, yeah, I think I kind of believe in it in a way. So, again, again, it's down to pers personal uh you know ideas i guess if you believe in it or not but yeah i've heard that it can it's more about religious kind of thing really well because it's odd because i've even i know a lot of people think oh you know it's all staged you don't know what's going on behind the scenes but uh, do you remember the um, chris credelli yeah i saw that one yeah where the guy cut yeah. himself a machete <laughs> and he bled <laughs> that's it that's it but there was a bit there where they were, I'm trying to remember which one it was, where they were in the beach and they were trying to pull him between the two cars and the, well, they were watching the moon. And the way it was, it was amazing. I thought, what the heck? The, that guy would have torn himself apart. But there was some sort of, it was like some sort of strength. Because sometimes there's certain things that we can't explain. I know some people will probably think, oh, it's all this mumbo jumbo, what they're talking about. But then with the... Other thing as well with the Shaolin monks, it's a similar thing, isn't it? You know, when they're yeah. with, with the martial arts, when they do the chi. Yeah, the so Japanese, in the brain, yeah, that's right. And the Japanese with the ki eye, you know, when you do that, yeah. when you when you do that, and then they they do. There's a, a technique called um, where with them. Um, I think it was one of the guys 
uh, with the Shaolin monks called the Iron j- Jacket or something like that. And when they do something, you know, it's the same with the amulet thing. You know, it make there's something there that's unexplained. Even scientifically, when I was watching it, you know, there's there's something there that people don't understand that they can't even, you know, even comprehend that's actually possible. Because there's certain things there that's probably probably something there that's that's stopping it. But you you know, even they're watching it, they're monitoring it. You know, when you put something on your body just to monitor yeah. things, we've seen the yeah. energy level that the chi and the ki, and we probably even when we're using the martial arts, the FMA, we've probably got something there. And that's probably why with the amulet thing and the, the techniques that we use, because when we tap in, I mentioned, I think someone mentioned that all the pressure points and all the different things, when you tap in, when you're doing the martial arts, when you hit a certain point or you're defending yourself, you know, when they're doing the FMA, you know, you don't know when they're doing that and they, they tap you on your on your pressure point or they tap you on your arm. And then the next thing you know, that guy, you can't even use your arm anymore because <laughs> they've touched you and you think, what the heck happened to me? You know, I've got no use of my arm anymore. So what do you, what do you think in, in terms of that? What do you, do you think it's... Um, do you think it's um, a, a, a mythical thing, or like you said, it's a belief thing? I know I'm 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 a I'm one of those sort of people that I feel that you know when you're doing that, the, you know, especially when I first saw Shaolin monk do something, I was like, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. You know, they they the breathing. You know, is there anything in the FMA, you know, that uh, as well, you know, that 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 sort of makes people think, oh my goodness, you know her. Uh, I, that, I think that probably it has kind of thing. I think there's a lot of it's down to belief, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, if, if it's real or not. Um, I am superstitious as well. Um, I'm sure there is uh, some ritual kind of thing that gives you super energy because a lot of it is down to mind control, isn't it? So yeah, 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 yeah. Also, it's just really you having this belief of that you can lift a car. Sometimes it's down to that. I've heard. I've seen a female lifting a, yeah. a car when there was an accident a uh, really mm. long time ago with super strength, superhuman strength. And that's without mm. emulate, you know. Uh, everyone's got this ability. Uh, yeah. I think, I guess, how you, how you, how you garner it, how you actually harness it and how you practice it. Mm. Martial art kind of tunes you in more into that yeah. energy. So, because you're constantly training the chi technique. I mean, every martial art has it. Some people don't believe mm. it. Some people don't have it in their system. But we all made of energy, you know, we made water, aren't we? So we all have this energy inside us that we can generate and martial art. I think probably best at doing that kind of thing, but it's kind of lost in history. So yeah, yeah. I'm sure there was, there was there once before where you literally tune yourself uh, into that, um, that unique power kind of thing, yeah. which I think we all have the ability, but I don't think, um, it's probably one other thing what I'd like to mention as well um, just to sort of let the audience know will you be doing any more uh, seminars and sort of like uh, festivals uh, with the FMA and when would they be uh, seminar wise I'm not really sure when I'm going to do the next one um, possibly um, because I'm so busy uh, at the moment, um, I know I'm doing I'm doing a show, a Chinese show next next week because uh, mm-hmm. I'm always invited by the Ch- the Chinese community. So I think I'm doing that one uh, next weekend. But seminar wise, um, I haven't got nothing planned at the moment. But maybe sometime next year when I when I get a a weekend free. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Anyway, I would like to really. It's been fun, seriously, bro. Um, been an honor speaking to you it's been a long time coming and I'm, I'm really glad you know um you know we'll be able to do this i'd like to ask you as well in the foreseeable future um maybe even possibly have uh, some other people that you may even refer who would you like to now if i was to have you as a panel on here to sort of questions who would you know and like to speak to because i spoke to bob breen uh not long ago would you like to, nice. what would you like to say to him if you spoke to him? Hello, <laughs> pay my respect. He's one of the uh, <laughs> old, school, old school grandmasters. So 
again, he's one of the best, you know what I'm saying? And he, uh, I think he did a lot for the martial arts. So, yeah, it would be nice to say hello to him. But I think a nice person to put to say hello to would probably be uh, Scott Edkins, you know, a fellow actor and martial artist. Yeah. Wouldn't yes. mind uh, having a good conversation with him. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's been one of the one of the great things that I'd like to have as well, you know, put it out, just to put it out there. And when I do launch it out there, uh, hope, Hopefully, it'll be uh, be great to uh, to have him on board to to have an interview with because it'll be fun. Because you know, I like doing footage like this. You know, sometimes you know you get to these to this point of where you feel that when you're filming something, it's all staged, but it's not all. It's good to see some of the stuff, natural stuff as well. You know, like what we're doing now. You know, and it, it makes people a bit more intrigued and more uh, likely to sort of want to watch because there's, there's there's some things where you, you look at it and you think, mm, I think that's a bit staged. You know, I think they scripted that. No, 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 folks, this isn't staged. This isn't, this isn't all scripted. It's all raw. It's all unedited and it's chilled and it's all a bit of fun, you know? So if you want to learn FMA and you, you you're, uh, you're nearby, you know, in London, um, drop in, uh, feel free to, uh, See Alex, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to help you out with that. And then even if you're into filming as well um, and you want everything, anything done with choreography, feel free to let him know. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you for having Thank me, bro. Uh, much appreciated. And yeah, I haven't done you. it for a long time. Or I, I don't really do much interview, to be honest. This is yeah. probably my one. Second interview to date that I've done recently or this year. Yeah, I don't normally... <laughs> normally not normally very good at interviews sorry <laughs> no it's all right no i like i like this because it's it's genuine and it's real and you know when people put it out there i was shocked because you know i've i've got it i've developed this now where this um confidence of where i've been able to sort of go out and speak to more people and being able to sort of even share people's little wins people's successes and experiences is what i'm doing is you know being able to let people see uh, what people are like, you know, and where they can help, you know, where I can help other people. Cause you never know, even seeing this, you'll get other people come, come to your door, bro, you know, to your, your, your gym, you know, and they'll go, hi, by the way, yeah, I saw your footage. You're like, oh, that was quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw that a few weeks ago or, or like a month ago, you know, and yeah, it was great. You know, and I'm in, down in London, I didn't even know where you were. And you're like, whoa. Yeah, no, I've always been here. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want to come and learn, you know, and this is what I like doing, you know, I like to share. Yeah, amazing, man. Uh, that's good. Uh, you know, well done for doing it and good luck for the future as well. So, and thank you for having me. So, yeah, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I apologize for the background noise because I'm still at the gym. I'm in the office, but you can hear people working out at the back. No, but there's still class going on. Yeah, no, so. it's all good. But what I'll do, I'll let you, I'll let you get on. You're a busy man, and I value your time. And you know, I'll, I'll, it'd be great to put this out there. And uh, you'd be. And where, great you, to, uh, when are you, where are you posting this? Well, whenever. Would you? Would you? Would you mind if I post it today? That's okay. No, no, I, I don't mind. Yeah, I mean, where, where will you know? Where, oh, what platform? Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'll be Facebook, and then I've got. I'll be putting on Instagram. And then I'm planning to have it on, on like a podcast on Spotify yeah. as well okay, as YouTube. Cool. Okay. Excellent. Oh, he's coming out. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I go. have to go now. Yeah, I have to go and yeah. crack on. Okay. Thanks very much, bro. Have a good yeah, one. Cheers, bro. You too. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.